ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Premier League Fantasy Football and welcome to my video. In today's video, I want to look at some of the best midfielder options in the game. Now, in my previous video, I looked at the forward options and I picked out my top five. Um, in this video, I'm going to go straight to my top five and here are they. So, it's Saka, Inwemo, Imitoma, Fernandez, and Son. Now, there's a lot of midfielders out there that it's pretty good to have in our FPL teams. There's a lot of options, more than the forward options, uh, I must say. So I thought, you know what, let me keep the video a little bit more shorter than usual and just look at my top five options. I know the first thing that you probably see, there's no Kevin De Bruyne or Salah. However, I know that they are going to be very popular as well. But I think these players are pretty much nailed in most of people's teams okay but let me know in the comments below what you think um the other things that we got to think about is i am recording this you know weeks away before the deadline so i will be creating another updated video um we've got the preseason to go through so there's going to be a lot of um uh, you know preseason games to watch and see how the players actually perform and, you know, the transfer window is still open, so things could change. Um, but, yeah, let's go through my top five midfielders. So, first up is Saka. Now, I know there's Odegaard, but I think Saka is... I think he could be more explosive. Um, and I think if he continues to keep his uh, penalties, and I think this season um, we could see him get over, you know, 20 goals. So last season, he got 14 goals, uh, 12 assists, um, 6 yellow cards, and 19 bonus points. Pretty damn good. 8.5. I think there's a lot of these 8.5, 9 million, um, you know, 7.5 million uh, midfielders are pretty damn good to have to have in our FBL teams. He is 47.2% owned, so it's quite hot highly owned um, the fixtures for Arsenal are fantastic as you can see Nottingham Forest at home then it's Crystal Palace away then it's Fulham at home you know I'm just looking at the first three because you know we do have the wild card where we could use to make some changes now looking at this three fixtures at least I definitely want to double up on the Arsenal attack so yeah very very good option Saka is pretty much my my main number one pick now in Wemo is a little bit of i want to say differential but a little bit out there um you know last season he was a a forward position now he's a midfielder and with tony out he's definitely going to stay up there right and he might even take penalties we, we're not 100 percent certain so we're going to see what happens in the preseason so last season he had nine goals and nine assists and 19 bonus points that's actually not too bad uh he is 6.5 um uh 26.7 percent owned and if we have a look at brentford's fixtures it's not that bad as well a little bit of a difficult fixture against spurs but you just never know these days right then is fulham away then is crystal palace at home and there's a Bournemouth fixture as well and this is just before the international break. So if we think that, you know, he's not going to do well, you know, if we do wildcard like after uh, game week four, then we can remove, right? But I think these fixtures are good enough for us to maybe even double up on the Brentford players. So definitely a good option, a cheap option of 6.5. Now I will be looking at more like gems where they are, very good 4.5s and 5 million and so on. But I think we need to wait for the preseason to properly start for us to kind of see those players. Let's move on to Mitoma um, from Brighton, 6.5. As you can see, he's quite highly owned as well. 39.1% um, owned. Um, yeah, seven goals and nine assists there. 11 bonus points to his name. No yellow cards, which is quite interesting. He's a midfielder position, obviously. Um, the fixtures are are not bad actually for Brighton, and to be honest with you, it doesn't really matter who they play. They are a team that they could score a lot of a lot of goals. Um, you know, they got a lot of players that is quite attacking. I know that they don't have McAllister, but I think without McAllister, they still did pretty damn well. Um, Luton at home is the first game. Then is um, Wolves away. Then is West Ham at home. I think these first three looks really good. There's quite a lot of 
teams with the first three looks really good on paper. So Mutoma is another player that, yeah, is on my top five. Next up is Fernandez. Um, he is 8.5, so he's not expensive anymore. He is 23.9% owned. I think he still is on penalties. Uh, he's got eight goals, nine assists. Now, he didn't really perform that well as we ex we, we basically expected him to do like really well. However, that Manchester United team is looking a little bit more better with Mount in there. I think if they get one or two more players, um, yeah, I can see them doing really well this season. You know, they, they did they did well last season. It's just Bruno Fernandes wasn't there yet. You know, I think he had, a, I'll say, a, an okay season, let's just say. However, being 8.5 and the fixtures for Manchester United is, is pretty good as well. Uh, Wolves at home, that's a good that's a good fixture to start off with. Then it Spurs is a little bit more difficult. Then it's Nottingham Forest. Then it's Arsenal and it's Brighton. Um, it's, not, it's not bad at all. So I think if you're going to go for a Manchester United player, yes, I know a lot of people are going to go for Rashford. But I think Bruno Fernandes is a good choice as well. He takes a lot of the set pieces. He could tick away with the points. So yeah, Bruno Fernandes is definitely on my radar. He's a player... That or is it? It's a team where I could even double up on that midfielders. I could go for Bruno Fernandes and Rashford as well. Just really attack those first three, and then maybe wild card, or maybe just to see what happens. Really, and the last player on my list is Son. As you can see, is nine million cheaper than last season. Um, he's got 10 goals, 6 assists there. So it wasn't the best season for him. But we know what he can do. We know he's passed. We know how many points that he can get. He's a player that could change a season around instantly. You know, there is Harry Kane, right? So a lot of people are going to go for Harry Kane. However, if you can't afford Harry Kane, maybe Son is the way to go. He's only 6.1. So he is a big, big differential to pick. 9 million though is quite expensive, but if you do want a Spurs player and you can't get Kane, I think Son is the best option. And now, I think with his price being 9 million, I think a lot of people are going to be going to try and get him in their team. Now, those were my five best midfielders, um, but there are other players here that could do well, and there's a lot of other options. Um, like like Salah, obviously, you know, he, but he's expensive, and I think a lot of people out there are thinking, hmm, maybe I want to, maybe I don't want Salah in my team. Maybe I could get all of those midfielders that are pretty damn good as well. You know, you got Rashford in there, you know, seventeen goals, seven assists, and um, quite highly owned. Uh, you got Madison there, that is a a bit different out there for me, especially because I wasn't sure that I was going to bring Madison, but he's 19.8% owned, you know, 10 goals and 10 assists for a relegated team like Leicester. You know, you've got players like Odegaard that could do well as well. Um, McAllister is 6 million. Is he going to keep his, like, is he going to be able to keep his penalties? We're not sure, you know, now that he's at, um, now that he's at in Liverpool, you got Martinelli's eight million. You got Eze that is six point five. You got quite a lot of good players. You got like Foden, Grealish, Mares, all around the same price, seven point five. We have no idea. This is actually a good pricing um, from uh, FPL, you know, because now we have to like we've got a lot of options here. I think I think these prices is actually really good, and I'm quite happy with with these prices because then we get to pick a lot of different players and I think a lot of people will start to see different options. You know, Sterling could do really well at 7 million. He's really cheap now. He's very expensive before. No one really went for him last season. Fixtures are not too bad after the Liverpool uh, game. So, yeah, I think that is pretty much it, guys. Those are my top best five midfielders. Uh, in the game, I think these players are definitely going to be on a lot of people's teams. So have a look, uh, pick a few if you want, and let me know in the comments below what you think as well. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. See ya.